I ordered the cheapest PCP air rifle from Walmart. In this video, we're gonna be hunting with it, testing it out, the accuracy and stuff like that. First test, the packaging test. Let's go and get this thing out of the box and I'll show you guys what this is. Okay, this is a Beeman Chief Two. When I did Amazon's cheapest PCP air rifle, um, it's basically the same thing. It's just the updated version. That's why it says Chief 2. I don't really know what's different about it, but it's a different air rifle. I got it in 177 caliber. It says 1,000 feet per second in 177 caliber. We'll test that out, see if it's actually true. 830, 22 cal. I got 177, so, uh, okay. Take a look, see if it survived that huge throw. All right. Looks pretty good. If it didn't have all this foam, we might have some problems, but looks like it took a hit there. Got some O-rings and stuff. Magazine. There's the air rifle. Here's a quick tip for all you air gunners. Before you even shoot the gun, you have to burn the boxes. That way, if you have a problem with the gun, you are forced to fix it, and then you learn more stuff about it, about air guns. So to go along with the cheapest PCP, I also bought the cheapest air compressor for filling up air rifles. I've never bought one of those super cheap air compressors, so I'm kind of curious to see if they actually will work. There it is. Oh my goodness, this thing is tiny. This is way smaller than my other compressors. I'm gonna hook this thing up to my truck so we can get it to work. Owner's manual said this button first, I think. Okay, it's working. I burnt the owner's manual, so I don't know how much to fill this. The green stops at 2000 PSI, so I'm just gonna fill it up to that. Okay, hopefully this turns on. Ah, I was right. 2,000 PSI. I accidentally overfilled a little bit, but should be okay. It's the next day, right now I like to keep filming last night. Trigger test, dry firing. It's like a long one stage, it's okay. I got 7.9 grain crossman's loaded up. Let's see how fast they shoot. Ooh, that is fast. For the accuracy testing, I got crossman premieres. JSB 8.44 grain, and these H&N's 8.6 grain. I'm just gonna rest the gun on my mirror. Other than like a bipod, that's like my favorite rest. So I'm gonna take five shots with each kind of pellet, and whichever one does the best, that's what we're gonna be hunting with. All right, first up is the Crossman Premiers. JSBs, these are a little bit heavier, so hopefully it'll be more accurate. Okay, let's test these H&N pellets. Groups were pretty bad with this, so I made some adjustments to the hammer spring, so that way it'd shoot closer to 900 feet per second instead of 1,000. And now we actually got some good accuracy here. So that, that, and that were without any adjustments. And then um, I shot groups again, H and N's, got a little bit better. JSBs did the best. I did get a fly right there, but I'm pretty sure that's because I didn't season the barrel for the JSBs. And then the rest of the four I shot went basically in the same hole. Uh, Crossman still did kind of bad. They did okay though. So it looks like I'm gonna be hunting with the JSBs because they did the best. Okay guys, we are at the barns, got the gun. Gonna try to get some pest birds with it. And maybe a ground, what if a groundhog pops out again like it did in the last video? If it does, I am gonna get it this time. Yeah, there's like tons of sparrows in these bushes and they're landing up there on the barn too. I'm sitting up against this telephone pole and right over here is like the main sparrow spot. They love landing on these little things on top of the barn. And sometimes the starlings will land on this wire and on that chimney looking thing. So I'm just gonna wait here, hopefully. Can wait out the birds. Hopefully they'll come over here and I'll be able to snipe them with the pellet gun. Starling right here. Don't fly, don't fly. Don't fly, focus. Oh, I got him. Sparrow. I think I just double loaded. I don't know. Here we go. Oh, what the heck? I got him. There he goes. I thought I double loaded that. I don't know if I did. I guess I didn't because I got him. That was weird. It like I shot and it didn't even. Usually the pellet makes a sound when it hits the bird. That was. It didn't make a single sound. That was so weird. Just fell. Two for two already. I haven't even missed a single shot. Got the starling right here. Perfect shot right in the middle of the chest. Let's see if we can find this sparrow. 
I think the sparrow fell on the roof up there, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to recover him. There's been another starling landing on the barn over here, like up on the wires right above me, so I wasn't able to get him, he just kept flying away. But I have a decoy now, so here's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully, he'll see the decoy and I'll be able to get him. There it is right there. Hopefully, I'll come land by it or something. Starling, starling. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. I got him. He almost, I thought he's gonna fly away. But he landed on that wire and I got him. Three for three. He landed up there in the corner, so they must be building a nest up in there. I think it's too early for them to have eggs right now, so they must just be working on the nest. So, it's going to feed the barn cats in the area. Let them find that. So a couple videos ago, I reviewed a bunch of budget PCP air rifles and I bought this Umrex Nodos and I couldn't fill it up with air. A lot of people commented, you have to cock the rifle first before you fill it with air. I've never had a PCP where you had to do that. So I'm gonna try it and if it works, we'll do some shooting and hunting with it like I did with the other ones. Gonna cock this thing. Get the cheap Walmart air compressor fired up. See if it works. Check it out, it filled up all the way. Gonna bleed this off. First is a chronograph test with the Crossman Premiers. This thing is quiet, holy cow. I just did the accuracy test with this off camera shooting from my truck over there. And here's the groups from 25 yards away. We got the JSBs, H&Ns, Crossman Premiers, and JTS pellets. Out of all of them, the JTS did the best, but they were the really heavy 21 grain pellets. They shoot really slow out of this, so I think for hunting, I'm gonna go with the H&Ns. They were the second best, and they'll be flying a little bit faster. So I don't know, the birds might have time to dodge these ones. Okay, I'm back at my little sparrow hunting spot. I wanna see if I can get a bird with this real quick. All right, here we go, here we go. Some sparrows up here. See if I can take them out. Oh, I hit him. I skinned the feathers off of him. It's about 30 yards, so I think I'm gonna have to aim a little bit high. Oh my gosh, he just flew away. All right, this is a far shot. This is about 60 yards. I don't even know what to hold. I'm just gonna hold like two mil dots on him. All right, this is about 35 yards. Aim a little bit high and I should get him. Oh yeah, I got him. So today is like the nicest day we've had all year. There's pretty much no wind out today, so I decided to get the Wildcats out here, and we're gonna be doing some long range shooting. We're gonna see which one is most accurate at 100 yards. So I got my 22 compact Wildcat and the 25 caliber. Both are shooting FX pellets. And I'm gonna be shooting at my old Wildcat, my first one. Got some targets on here. So I'm gonna put this out at 100 yards and we'll take five shot groups with each gun. We'll see which one's most accurate. I'm guessing the 25 caliber is gonna do better because not just because of the long barrel, but because it's 25 caliber. The wind won't blow it around as much as the 22. I've still not taken this one out for any hunting yet. So after we do the shooting, we'll take this out for some hunting too. And I got it uh, 100 yards. Okay, according to the chair gun app, I have to aim four and a half mil dots holdover. Should be dead on. A little bit of wind out there. Oh my goodness. It's hitting the same spot, at least. There's definitely wind out there blowing it though. Okay, let's try the 25 cal. Make sure I'm sighted in first. Good enough. Okay, chair gun app's also telling me four and a half mil dots for this one, so it's the same holdover as the 22. Mm, pretty good. I did not expect the wind to be blowing them this far, though. Oh man. Okay, walking out here, I can definitely feel the wind has picked up. It's crazy how much wind can blow pellets when you start shooting from long ranges. But here's our groups. 22 did actually better than 25 caliber. Got one, two, and then all the rest went in this one spot. 25 cal, kind of moving all over the place. I actually did this test a couple days ago when there was zero wind out and every single shot was going in the same hole at 100 yards. It was crazy. Both these guns are capable of basically one hole groups at 100 yards, but if there's just a little bit of wind out with pellets they kind of move all over the place on the other side of the box there's like barely any exit holes oh man i hope my air rifle is okay oh it got destroyed 
No. Look at all the bullet holes in it. Instead of going past bird hunting with the 25 caliber, we're going to go after a groundhog. I've not gone groundhog hunting all year and have seen some out already. So here's the plan. Got the 25 caliber right here. And over here, there is some fresh groundhog holes. I have seen a groundhog here this year already. Just sitting right there at the edge of the hole. So I'm just sitting in the grass right now. It should be fine. I don't think he'll get scared if he comes out, if I stay still enough. So I guess I'll just see you guys whenever the groundhog comes out. There he is. Get the crosshairs focused. And that gotta have him turn his head sideways. I mean, I could put it like right on his eyeball, but kind of a risky shot. If this is a 30 caliber. I could put it down there on his neck. 25 cal, he'd probably make it down to his hole. Come on, turn sideways. Here we go, there we go. Got him. Instant lights out. Perfect shot. Okay, let's go get this groundhog. Hopefully he didn't. What? No. Where'd he go? There's no way he got away. Okay, that thing had to have died from the headshot. I guess it's possible he flopped down his hole. Like, I cannot see anything down there. I'm still gonna count that as my first groundhog of the year. The shot felt good. And with the 25 caliber, there is no way that thing did not die. There's an injured fox down here. He can barely walk. He must have got hit by a car. He's right down there. Yeah, his legs are broken or something. I wanna try to put him out with the 25 cal. There he is. I mean, he's able to walk, but like, oh my goodness, he's not gonna be able to hunt or anything. I don't know if I should kill him or not. He can't run, but he can, I don't know, he can move. Oh man, I don't know, should I shoot him or not? If it was fox season, I wouldn't even think about it, but I'm pretty sure they probably have pups right now. I don't even see him now. Oh, there he is right there. See him trying to walk. Oh man. I think it's just one leg. Animals are a lot tougher than you'd think they'd be. So I'm gonna leave him there. If I didn't know they have pups right now, I would shoot him. But if I kill that one, I might, I'd probably be killing all the pups too, if they have any right now. So comment what you would do. Cause I don't know, I think I'm doing the right thing. For those of you who think I'm just out here killing stuff for fun, I don't or else I would have killed that fox. But that's it for this video. Subscribe if you like the air gun videos.